Oh, I do that shit. You have to tilt your head to the side. There you go. There you go. It's okay. Keep going. Be careful, man. That's not recommended. <laughs> Hello Tarantula lovers and welcome back to Tarantula Haven. I'll explain that intro a little bit later, but before I get started, I wanted to apologize to you for not posting recently. Prior to going to Animal Con, I had come down with COVID. After two and a half years of safeguarding and not getting sick, uh, this year my wife and I, we decided that we were not going to mask up this year. And uh, sure enough, two and a half weeks into school and we're sick. So uh, yeah, I guess it's bound to get us all at some point, but fortunately because I'm vaccinated and and I took some Paxlovid, I was able to knock it out relatively quickly. And I was really, really hoping to knock it out before Animal Con because I did not want to miss it. There was a lot riding on it, and it was just something that I would have been very sad if I missed. So fortunately, I was able to test negative before I attended Animal Con, and I was able to go. So I was really, really grateful for that. So prior to going to Animal Con, I was really, really nervous about attending. And part of it was, I guess, kind of uh, not feeling worthy of it because I'm not a very big uh, YouTuber. I've only got 17,000 subscribers. And we're talking about people that have hundreds of thousands and even in the millions. And I was just feeling really small. But not only that, I was also unsure about what to expect of everything. I, you know, I, I didn't know exactly what was going to go on. And as far as communication was concerned, I wasn't getting anything from them as far as like what all we would be doing and how I would be spending my time and all that kind of stuff. So I was getting pretty nervous about it. I emailed Brian Barczyk and he sent me some stuff and I even called uh, Richard Stewart of the Tarantula Collective and he kind of put me at ease a little bit and I messaged with Tarantula Cat and she also did the same thing because they'd done things similar to this prior to it and I just had never attended anything like this. So I was nervous from the day that I said yes I would be attending all the way until after the first day of uh, Animal Con when, when it was open to the public. So I was uh, kind of stressed out about it and um, it was all for nothing but you know it was was still one of those things that I had to go through uh, and experience before I could finally start feeling at ease. So I put together a little vlog about it to share with you some of my experiences from my perspective. And um, there will be tarantulas in this because I had the benefit of being able to bring some of my tarantulas to share with people. And I'll talk a little bit more about that as we get going. But here's my vlog and let's get on into it. All right, I'm here at the Caribe Royale Resort and um, I'm in my room. And if you check this out, I brought my tarantula cribs enclosures. <laughs> and um, I have to make sure that they all made it safe because I'm bringing this for tarantula cribs. They want to have a display at the convention. So let's make sure that they're okay. And I don't know what their pet policy is. But... I'm sure it doesn't have tarantula friendly policies. Oh, I'm gonna have to cut that probably.
And we're also okay. So it looks like everybody made it just fine. And I'll keep you updated on more stuff as we go along. The resort was beautiful and the tarantulas made it there just fine. I was a little bit worried about them because, you know, I didn't want there to be any bumping around or anything like that that might harm them. But everything turned out okay. I was trying to be as inconspicuous as possible bringing them into the hotel. So I had them in their enclosure boxes so that they would be enclosures. And I didn't want to draw any attention to the uh, idea that I might have live tarantulas in the room because I don't know what their pet policies are, but I know that a lot of people would probably frown upon bringing live tarantulas into a hotel establishment. But honestly, there were so many people there and there was just so much going on. I really don't think anybody cared. So it was all good in the end. And uh, I was able to take my tarantulas to the main hall. And that's pretty much where they stayed the whole time. So I didn't have to worry about anybody discovering them in my room or anything like that. So the next day was our industry day, and that was pretty much where the influencers or creators or whatever you want to call this got together. We got to meet each other. We also had the opportunity to attend several panels, and on those panels, they gave us information on how to improve your brand or how to attract more followers and all that kind of stuff. So it was pretty cool. It was neat to, to attend those things and get some insight from people that have been in this for a long time and have you know hundreds of thousands of subscribers or even millions of subscribers. So it was a little bit revitalizing for me and gave me some new ideas and so on. So overall, that was a good thing. So I was still trying to figure everything out and I, I felt like I wasn't very relaxed quite yet. I was still trying to kind of map out the whole place because I knew where the main hall was, but I had to figure out where the green room was, where my panels were, and just kind of make a mental map of where everything was. So I felt like I couldn't really relax until I knew all that stuff. And I felt like I missed a whole lot of opportunity to get video of uh, some of the creators that were around and things like that. And even kind of mingling with them and getting to know them better because a lot of these people know each other from prior events and things and uh, their friends and so on. So they were already getting together and planning things. And I just kind of felt a little bit left out, but that's okay. That's just me. That wasn't on anybody else. I was just kind of in my own little world trying to figure everything out. So the next day is when the public finally came and here's that part. All right, today's the day. Everything's getting ready to start. So I'm pretty excited about this. And here's the panel for the main stage. So you can see right now, everything is completely empty, but people are starting to show up and shuffle in and check out all the stuff. So hopefully it's gonna be a great day. Put it down, put it down. 
down. <laughs> It's going to be really good for our, us to learn together. This is all, you know, this is obviously AnimalCon started years ago as a brainchild of mine. Like I said, as you guys are walking up, I got chills because, you know, years and years ago, I thought we needed to do an animal show like a VidCon or a playlist that is for creators. And, and, and here we are, as a matter of fact, just before COVID hit, I was ready to pull the trigger. And then COVID hit and it's like, oh, not exactly the time to do it. Here's the man who put all this together. <laughs> What's going on? Man? Hey, how you, you doing, so man? Thank you so up. much for the opportunity. Yeah, you really having fun? It. Yes, I am. I'm getting to meet a lot of people. Hey, how you doing? I have a question. Uh oh, he has a question. <laughs> all right, go for it. What's your question? Can I be in one of your videos? We'll get you in one of our videos, and he's, you're in this video you're too. You're in my video right now, buddy. What's your name? Michael. Hey, Michael. <laughs> awesome. I'm on Tarantula Haven, so you can watch that on there. Okay. Yeah, Tarantula Haven is awesome. Trust me, they're they're a great channel. Thank you so I much. appreciate you so much, dude. Seriously, I can't thank you enough for showing this. Well, thank you for the Finally, after experiencing everything, I was able to relax. I felt a little bit better about everything. So I got into the groove and started to, you know, really connect with some of the creators and so on. The panels were exciting. They were pretty fun because you had a group of people that would come into the room where you were and you would sit on a panel with other creators and the moderator would have some prepared questions for you. And then finally, after that, they would open up the floor for Q and A from the general public. And a lot of people had some really interesting questions and it was really cool to hear the creators come up with their responses. So here's that part. I'm in the green room right now and we are getting ready to go to our first panel. If I look around here, we got some people. There's Adam Wickens right behind me there. Brian Barczyk just walked out. If I look behind me there, there's Mikey of Ads Canada. And we got Petco over here. So we're getting ready to get started. I guess we'll just get started with a slight introduction, who you are, maybe a little bit of what you keep, and yeah, we'll start there. I'm Tarantula Cat, and I make YouTube videos about tarantulas and jumping spiders. And I have a snapping turtle named Bowser. <laughs> Alex Gastelum from the uh, Tarantula Haven, and I keep tarantulas um, in isopods. Kelly from Cave and Vertebrates. Um, I'm predominantly a tarantula vendor and breeder, and I make videos on the side. My name is uh, Richard from the Tarantula Collective. I uh, make a lot of videos about tarantulas, scorpions, but also sometimes snakes and geckos. But my main focus is arachnids, and I apologize for being late. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us. My name is Dion, and I go by Reptiliatus on socials. And uh, yeah, you're probably thinking, wait, but this reptile stuff, but I, I have quite a large collection of invertebrates as well, so I'm happily keeping many species of tarantula, a few scorpion species, a pretty diverse collection of isopods as well, and yeah, so I'm happy to be here. When, no, just uh, when you started uh, keeping inverts, and have you seen their popularity increase over the past right. however many years? So, when I first started keeping is when I started YouTube so I've been like keeping about five years now and pretty much you can see me from like the beginning and just like keeping them in like critter keepers on cocoa fiber and just I mean they were fine but I feel like there's been a progression 
So um, I've been keeping uh, probably off and on since 1996 uh, different invertebrates, but as far as tarantulas, seriously, I didn't start till about um, 2016, I guess six years. So yeah, I, I just really fell in love with them. It was when I had got my first old world tarantula that kind of opened the floodgates for me. And thank you to my wife that's down here. Um, yeah, we had a deal. She said, if you get bitten, that's it. And I've been really careful not to get bitten. But um, yeah, there's just so many beautiful species out there. And it just really, it, it, I just became really enthusiastic about it and started keeping more and more. Sound like a little bit of controversy. Now, we all know that when we go into a pet store, we are able to see all kinds of invertebrates for sale. You can also see them on places like uh, Craigslist or Morph Market. And there is always going to be a mixture between captive bred and wild caught. I would love to know your thoughts on the uh, suitability of invertebrates as a captive bred specimen versus a wild caught. Any thoughts you have about those two would be amazing to share. Did you jump on that, dude? <laughs> <laughs> but personally, I try to avoid anything that is wild caught. Mostly I deal with tarantulas, so of course there's quite a few tarantulas that are being bred in captivity and there's plenty to choose from, but there are several particular species that are often wild caught and you'll find them usually as adults in the, the hobby, you know, if you go to a reptile show or something. Um, and they'll have them for relatively cheap because if they're wild caught then that means that they can easily get more. So a lot of times they'll be relatively inexpensive for you. Um, yeah, I try to avoid it because I don't like the idea of taking something out of the wild to sustain the pet trade. So I feel like it should be something where they're breeding it. Um, Keeping invertebrates and the viral videos where they make every invertebrate look super cute. And hey, let's face it, we do love invertebrates here. We do think they're cute. But definitely people can often get the misconception that it's easy to care for certain species with the rise of TikTok and Reels, um, have you seen a particular species that you really wish was not a fad or that people should absolutely not be keeping? Okay, uh, the one that, that always kind of gets me is that people that decide they want to get a tarantula, uh, mainly for TikTok or something, and they go for a, a Therophosa blondi or a Sturmy, like the largest tarantula out there that has some of the, the highest uh, needs as far as humidity and, and things of that nature. Uh, so it, they see a big tarantula, like, ooh, that's gonna give me some views. But it's really, it could be very difficult to take care of them to, to meet those humidity needs and they could have bad molts or if they're not in the right enclosure, they could climb up to the top and fall and, and easily rupture their abdomen. So that's one that I would, you know, at least keep a few tarantulas before you, you jump on that one. So back to the beginning of the video, what was going on there? Well, Mo of Tarantula Cribs contacted me and he wanted to know if I could bring some Tarantula Cribs to the event completely set up along with Tarantulas. Since he was flying and wasn't able to bring any, he asked me if I could do it because I'm local and I was driving there. So I agreed. That was a very smart move on his part because the Tarantulas, of course, attracted people. They wanted to come look at the Tarantulas, which of course opened them up to looking at the Tarantula Cribs. So it was a win-win. And it was so popular. In fact, some of the creators came by to look at them because they weren't necessarily arachnid people, they were more snake people, lizard people, etc. So there were several creators that came by that were very interested in them. And he even had some offers to buy the tarantulas from him, um, which of course they didn't belong to him. So I told him he should ask for some crazy price and see if anyone bites. But of course he didn't. One of the creators who came by while I wasn't there was none other than Mike Holston, who goes by the name The Real Tarzan on social media. And he's a huge influencer with millions of subscribers, and I probably don't even need to tell you that because you probably know who he is. Well, Mo told me that he was very interested in holding it, but of course I wasn't there, so I wasn't there to give permission, so he didn't allow it. And he said that he would come back by. Well, I saw that he was in one of the panels that was up there in the main stage, so I waited around until he was finished so I could say, hey, yeah, you can come check out my tarantulas. So he had a meet and greet that he had to attend to, and then he was gonna come back and hold the tarantulas. So I waited around a little bit longer. I was actually getting ready to leave at that moment, and um, but I figured I would wait around and not miss this opportunity to have him hold one of my tarantulas. 
When he returned from his meet and greet, he came with a woman who had been hanging around with him, and I don't know if she was his wife or his girlfriend or what, but he really wanted her to hold the tarantula because she had never held one before. Well, little did I know that she's also an influencer that goes by the name of Laura Leon, who has about 1.3 million subscribers on Instagram. So I allowed it, and it's better if you watch for yourself. So let's go ahead and check out the video. Hey. She's a hair flicker, so she may try to flick some hair. She don't want to do something like that? No, she, well, she's fine. She doesn't want to. She wants to move like that? No, she'll calm down. She doesn't like it. Um, so, so if you check stands and get on these, okay. He's asking, what would be a good first time venomous species to work with? Come over this way. Hold your hand over the table. Two hands. Two hands. Two hands. Yeah. No, no. Wait, wait, wait. So in South Africa, you got not take that. I would presume copper here, but I don't know. You guys. Ryan, what are you saying? Anything so you want to do is This is the uh, Mexican red meat, Rakikama Pamori, and uh, they are live about 20 to 30 years. She's approximately six years old. I would pick something that's and she's not really full grown yet. She can get a little bit bigger than that. Right now, are they going to max out about five, six inches? How many inches will I say? This is probably about four and a half, getting close to five. She's almost full grown. Beautiful. What do you guys say, honey? So it's it's so it's 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 Do you want to hold it? Thank you for getting me. Like, you know that one video that you do over in the Mexican red meat. Now, sometimes tarantulas get a little freaked out if you're talking too much, talking too loud, or you can blow on them, they'll freak out. But almost 95% of the time, a tarantula will never bite the surface that it's on. Look at that. Now, there are tons of arachnids out there. Some people have arachnophobia, right? But now, when someone discovers an animal, this one is called a Mexican red meat. Why is that? Well, it's from Mexico. And if you look, it has red knees. So sick. Now, some uh, tarantulas carry a, a, a mouth venom and they'll bite you and well, the, not you, but the animal is trying to consume um, as a defense mechanism. But these guys are hair kickers. They'll take those back legs and they'll flick those hairs and those hairs will act as fiberglass that will get in your nostrils and your mouth and your eyes. It can potentially even blind you. How insane is that? I love Mexican red knees. I love seeing adults because those orange and red knees really pop. But I love the black hair, but at the end of the hair, it is orange and red. Oh man, what the heck, dog? Yes. Thank you, brother. Thank you. All right, now put on your face. <laughs> Hey, did you want to try? Oh, but the big space. 
Oh, oh she's flicking hairs. Uh, oh, she's yeah. adding up. <laughs> yeah, when she flicks hairs, it makes you real itchy, like fiberglass. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, I wouldn't want to get that on you. Yeah, they all do that. Yeah, um, these species do. The one in here also. That one does not. It's a New World species, which means it's from the Americas, so it's mildly venomous. But they don't have the urticating hair, so they're more prone to bite. Well, let's see if I can do it. But if you get flick hair, don't tell me that it hurts. She was. Nico, you're not going to be scared of that. Alright, again, again. Hold your hand over there. It doesn't really feel like you're holding much, right? They're super light. Hold the other hand on the other side. There you go. Slow mark over. It's okay. Don't move your hand. Oh my god, you're the best. <laughs> yeah? Can you see? Can you see? Take a picture. Oh my god, Nicholas. Finally, you got it. She was, she's gonna buy one of them. Thank you. She was very good. All right. Okay, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I kind of freaked out there. You probably heard it in my voice. I was telling them that's not recommended. My Bihamori is a hair flicker and it doesn't take much to set her off. And I could just see her flicking all kinds of hair all in her face and her having a reaction. And it's all going to be my fault. So everything turned out okay. She did not kick hairs all in her face. No harm, no foul. So everything's all good. But I will say this. I do not encourage people putting tarantulas on their face. I understand that these are not arachnid people and they don't understand that in our community, in our world, it's highly frowned upon to put a tarantula on your face. It was a good opportunity for me to get some good video of the real Tarzan handling my tarantula. I can now say that my, the real Tarzan has held my tarantula and these guys have millions of followers. Maybe some way, somehow, some of that might trickle down to me. But you know what was more worth it to me than that? That look on that boy's face when he held the tarantula and the excitement he felt of having held his first tarantula, that is the same feeling that I had when I held my first tarantula and that memory has never faded. I believe that young man's name is Nicholas. And Nicholas, if you're watching this, I hope you get your first tarantula and I hope it brings you as much enjoyment as mine do. I had a wonderful time at Animal Con and that is a memory that I'm going to cherish forever. I do have one regret and that is that I did not stay long enough to attend the Gatorland Zoo trip. They had a final wrap up for all the creators to go to Gatorland Zoo and they got to connect with each other and bond and feed animals and, and hold alligators and just things like that. And that was just something that I would have really have loved to have done. But unfortunately, I had to go back. I had to go to work the next day. I had to prepare and I didn't want to get home too late so it is something that I definitely missed out on I see all the videos and stuff that everybody's posting and it just makes me jealous but that's okay they're planning on having another one again next year and I hope to attend that one as well and it promises to be bigger and better and I hope to see you there if you also attend so that does it for me today I hope you enjoyed it I'm gonna leave you with a little slideshow of the people that I met at Animal Con until next time keep loving them tarantulas